everyone's aware that the Batman and Spider-Man trilogy stand out as some of the best superhero games ever made. But the burning question remains, which one gets the crown? Well, I'm here to answer that very question. So let's jump right in. I'm going to kick things off with something we can all agree with, because let me tell you, when it comes to the design of the worlds and characters in these games, they've really knocked it out of the park. I mean, you've got these massive worlds with recreations of New York and Gotham, and even though they're only partially shown, the sheer size is staggering. Okay, let's specifically talk about Batman Arkham Knight, and this game was a titan in the Arkham series, especially in terms of world building. It boasted the largest map of the series. The designers were on fire with this one. They matched and perhaps even surpassed the high standards set by the legendary Arkham City. If you're wandering through the game's world, every corner of the town, both inside and out, is bursting with uniqueness. And it's really impressive how they adapted and transformed to fit seamlessly into the world. Now, moving into the Spider-Man's universe. Here, the designers had a bit of a shortcut, aesthetically speaking. Why? Because New York City's a real place, and their task was to bring this vibrant city into the gaming realm. I'm not sure if that's technically harder than building a world from scratch, but from a design standpoint, it's somewhat more straightforward. But what a job they did! Playing the game, you'd swear you were roaming the streets of New York. The game lets you explore parts of the city, immersing you in the urban landscape. But here's the kicker, it wasn't just New York's charm that made Spider-Man's design stand out. It was, without a doubt, the way they designed and portrayed the NPC characters with such realism. Next up, we've got City Traversal, which is a vital aspect of any superhero game. By the time we reach Arkham Knight, Batman's traversal is seamless with the grapnel boost, dive bombs, and the Batmobile. Spider-Man games, on the other hand, consistently deliver thrilling web-swinging experiences, complete with air tricks and wall runs. Spider-Man 2 even introduces a mid-air boost and a wingsuit for faster movement. Although Batman's traversal evolves impressively, it doesn't quite reach the fluidity and freedom of Spider-Man's until the final game. So in this arena, Spider-Man takes the lead. Alright, let's talk combat, and in the Arkham series, you're in the midst of a pulse-pounding fight and moving through enemies with a combat system that feels like a rhythm game. Timing is everything here. Hit the attack and counter buttons just right and watch your combo meters soar, and as your combos rack up, you unlock powerful special moves. There's the classic special combo takedown, a knockout move for any opponent, no matter their strength or gear. Need a moment to breathe in a hectic fight? Unleash the Bat Swarm to stun everyone around you. And don't forget the Disarm and Destroy move, which is a must for disarming almost any weapon. Oh, and Arkham Knight even throws in a nifty weapon steal mechanic, separate from your combo meter, giving you more freedom in combat. But let's swing over to the Spider-Man games. And here, things are similar, but not quite. So instead of countering, you're dodging which keeps the action fast-paced and your combo meter still builds, but it's more about gaining XP. The real center of attention is on your focus meter, which lets you execute instant takedowns or, crucially, heal mid-battle, which is a lifesaver on tougher difficulties. And let's not forget the aerial combat. It's a game-changer, because as Spider-Man, you can launch enemies into the air, swing-kick them off buildings, and create visually stunning combos. In Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2, both heroes have unique super abilities. Miles wields electrifying Venom powers, while Peter Parker in Spider-Man 2 gets to play with nanotech and symbiote powers. Now, you can totally get by without these abilities, but using them is immensely gratifying. Alright, this brings us towards my next point, stealth. In the Spider-Man games, quite frankly, can't hold a candle to the Batman ones. It's almost like stealth in Spider-Man is an afterthought, something they added just because the Arkham games had it. Naturally, Batman as a character is inherently more stealth-oriented, and this is brilliantly reflected in the games. The Arkham series, particularly from the second installment, Arkham City, offers an impressive array of over 10 types of takedowns and numerous gadgets designed specifically for stealth. And on top of all this, the enemy AI in these games is smart. It adapts to your playing style, making each encounter unique and challenging. Contrast this with the Spider-Man games, where the stealth feels overly simplified and, dare I say, a bit dull. In Spider-Man 2, for example, you can effortlessly create a web line anywhere, without any limitations. Miles' invisibility feature feels overpowered, and the gadgets from previous games that could have added depth to stealth are absent. 
but in the Arkham games, enemies would destroy vantage points if you overuse them, and this forced players to be strategic, to think on their feet rather than just hang around for an easy takedown. So to sum it up, when it comes to stealth gameplay, it's kinda clear which series excels. Now how can we talk combat without the boss fights, because I must say, Batman really shines here. I know this may be a bit controversial, but hear me out. While Spider-Man's boss battles are decent, with a few shining moments like the Vulture and Rhino Scorpion encounters where timing and environmental tactics come into play, they tend to follow a repetitive pattern – dodge, punch, repeat. The Arkham series, however, raises the bar. Take for instance the iconic Mr. Freeze fight in Batman Arkham City. It's a masterclass in strategy, demanding varied tactics as Freeze adapts to your moves. You can't rely on the same strategy twice, because these fights aren't just about brute force, they require a blend of gadgets and skills, pushing you to think creatively. On the other hand, yes, yeah, Spider-Man isn't just about brawling. The games do offer a variety of engaging, visually spectacular battles, but they often boil down to memorizing attack patterns. It's fun, sure, but lacks the mechanical intrigue that a truly great video game boss should offer. And shifting gears to side missions, it's a tight race between the two. Both series have their hits and misses, with some missions being unforgettable and others, frankly, very forgettable. When it comes to collectibles, though, Spider-Man swings ahead. The sheer volume of Riddler trophies in the Batman games can feel overwhelming, whereas Spider-Man's collectibles like backpacks and time capsules come with charming narratives and dialogues which are a lot cooler. Moving on, and we've got the world of DLCs for Batman and Spider-Man games. Now, I'm mainly talking about those juicy story expansions that give us more reasons to ignore our social lives because, just for a moment, consider Bally Harley Quinn's Revenge, Cold Cold Heart, and the Season of Infamy for Batman. Now, these aren't just add-ons, they're like the cherry on top of an already delicious gaming sundae. Then there's Spider-Man with the City That Never Sleeps DLC, sliced into three chapters. Both games are pretty good, but Batman's Season of Infamy does tie up loose ends like a pro, while Spider-Man's DLC felt more like a teaser for what's to come. Still, both are neck and neck in the DLC race. Now let's talk extras. So have you ever noticed how Spider-Man games lack a combat challenge mode? Well, in the Arkham series, you've got Riddler's Revenge and AR missions that let you flex those stealth and combat muscles and you could easily lose count of the hours you would spend trying to beat your high score in Arkham Knight's Iceberg Lounge. Spider-Man, on the other hand, sticks to the story. The Arkham games also spoil us with playable characters like Catwoman, Robin, and Nightwing, each with their unique flair. In contrast, Insomniac's games offer Peter and Miles Spider-Man, with similar moves but different special abilities. I mean, imagine a challenge mode with Wraith, Prowler, or even a chance to go berserk as Venom. Ugh, a missed opportunity if you ask me. On the brighter side, Spider-Man games outshine Arkham games in one area – suits. In Spider-Man, unlocking a skin feels like Christmas, each with its own special ability. It adds a flavor to the gameplay, unlike the Arkham series where skins are more like a fashionable afterthought. And finally, it's time for the one factor that makes or breaks any game – the story. Now this is a super subjective topic, and there's no right answer here. But in my opinion, the Batman games seem more like a blockbuster movie filled with all of your favorite Batman villains. Well, don't get me wrong, the game does a great job in showing us the chaotic world of Gotham City and throws in a bunch of cool storylines, but it kind of misses out on showing us more about Batman himself. We see him fighting and solving crimes, but we don't get much about what's going on inside his head or how he changes throughout the game. But when it comes to the Spider-Man games, it's different because it's not just about Spider-Man swinging around and fighting baddies. It's also a lot about Peter Parker, the guy behind the mask. You see his life, his problems, like trying to pay rent or sort things out with his girlfriend, MJ. And the villains? They're not just bad guys to beat up. The game shows us why they became villains, like Dr. Octopus and Martin Lee, which makes you kind of understand and even feel sorry for them. It's like you're not just playing as Spider-Man, you're living his life. Now, as for deciding which game takes the crown as the overall best, well, that's a tough call, and I'm turning that answer over to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and preferences, so drop your choice in the comment section below, and let's see which game comes out on top. See y'all in the next one. Peace!